Good afternoon, my YouTube channel. How are you guys? Hopefully you guys are doing good. Uh, I'm, if you guys are wondering, you know, I'm doing good. I just got back from just running around today. I, I did a lot of that. I had a lot of time on my hands. I was very productive. But um, I just got back from the Honda store. Uh, and it's, it's like, like the Honda car. It's like a mo motorcycle. And um, I was doing whatever paperwork I needed to do to get Honda Ruckus. And I think they're so cool. Uh, and a little moped 50cc. So if you guys have a regular license, you guys can ride them. Um, well, it's 49cc. But I just got back from that. I got approved. I'm financing. I top my credit, you know. So that was fun. Probably get it like next week, the week after that. We'll see. Soon. It's fun riding that around instead of my truck. Uh, I'll have to show you guys my truck. I don't know if I've really done a proper truck reveal. I love my truck, but 80 miles per gallon uh, is driving on a free tank of gas, you know? So I'm going to take that advantage. I do a lot of driving around town, so besides the point, today is uh, a fun video for me. I'm excited because I was talking with Harrison this morning. Shout out to Harrison. I think he's been shout out. He said in like the past three videos, but shout out to Harrison. Uh, me and him hung out this morning. And I was talking to him, I was like, Harrison, like, I want to post today. I want to get this consistent routine of posting, but I don't know what to post. And a few weeks ago, another one of my buddies, Julian, was like, you know, Aiden, you have a lot of stories. You have a lot of stuff you could talk about. Just share a story, you know, be a storyteller. Um, and Harrison was like, you know, yeah, but you should, you should, you should share your testimony. You should share your story on coming to Christ. And... <clears throat> Here I am. Today is my story. I'm sharing my story. Uh, recently in life, um, I've been learning a lot about the power of my stories, of our stories, right? Because, you know, it's the saying I've heard is, my story, his glory. Um, and I think that holds a lot of truth. And there's two ministries that I'm a part of. One's Sunday night ministry, and this one's focused on evangelism. And in that... We sometimes, it's different every weekend, but we talk about like how valuable our story is and sharing what, we, what, what we've been through, what we've gone through and how we're now in this relationship with Christ. And then I'm also in, um, I don't know, I, I, I probably should look into it. I don't know how all the rules and regulations work on YouTube, but um, I'm, I'm in the sexual purity class, okay? And in that sexual purity class, um, we talk about also sharing your stories to our other brothers in Christ, or even just people in general, right? Because modern culture is like the hookup, you know, like, let us let me go find this chick, hook up with her, and like, that's it. But of course, as Christians, um, and I'd say a good amount of religions are, you at least, for most religions, at least wait a little bit. And then for Christianity, it's not till marriage, till you're supposed to do anything. And it's only supposed to be with your wife. And they they talk a lot about... Our, our stories hold a lot of power. My story and my sexual purity path isn't really like super crazy. Um, but it's that consistent theme that the Lord's bringing up in my life of sharing your story to bring him glory, right? So that's my goal today, guys. My goal today is to keep this under 20 minutes and hopefully I can without rambling and sharing too many stories within my big, within my testimony. But, um, um, but this is just to share my story of how, how I'm right here and how I'm in love with Jesus and why I think you guys should be in love with Jesus and how he saved me. Uh, so let's just get right into it, right? So I'm Aiden. Hopefully some of you guys know, some of you guys don't know. Um, hopefully some more people see this. And hello, I'm Aiden. Nice to meet you. Hopefully we can be friends. Uh, one day brothers and sisters in Christ. If we aren't already. But I come from a non-Christian background. Uh, my parents are divorced. They, uh, they divorced when I was like four. I don't know. And um, I never knew the Lord. There was a few instances where I was, where I heard, um, like back in middle school, I had this buddy. Funny story right here. Here we, here we go, one of my stories. 
Uh, his name was Hari, what they called him. And me and him were great buddies. We walked to school every day. We biked to school. This was back in middle school. And right afterwards, we'd run track. And then after track, we'd go to the college. There was a college right down the street. And we'd go to the college library. We'd get some snacks. We would play some games on the computer. And this college was a, was a, was a Christian college. And his mother and father, they were, they were believers. And so was he. And I was interested in Christianity. You know, I was very curious. So I was... I was talking. I was, oh, bro, you should your dad to, to tell me about, about like I, I just want to know. You know, I was curious. Like I want to know. Tell me about him. You know, picture a little middle schooler me. It's probably pretty much just a little more of a younger face and longer hair, right? This little guy wanted to know about Jesus, right? And when he was, all right, cool. So one afternoon, I went over to the apartments where they were living in, and his dad was telling me about Christ. I can't tell you what. I just remember we were talking about Jesus. And I was asking questions. I don't know what questions a middle schooler would ask about Jesus. Who knows? Um, but I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back and, and hear some more about it. But um, uh, they, they were worried. Funny, funny. Okay, you guys can laugh at this. I'm, I'm going to laugh at this. They were worried that like my mom was going to sue them or something like that, which I find funny. <laughs> um, uh, so that never happened again. But I, I got introduced to, to him a little bit there uh, with my mom. When I was younger with my other brother, we'd go to churches every once in a while on the weekend. Um, a whole bunch of random churches. I remember one was at this was at my was at my elementary school actually. They ran their church out of. We were there for a little bit, and then I went to this other church, which actually it's funny. I'm this this one church I went for for the kids youth group, um, is actually the church is my home church now. Uh, I was there for a little bit when I was younger. Went to a few different churches, so I had an idea of the Lord a little bit when I was younger. But I never really knew him like I do now. So, yeah, that's that's like a, a snippet of my background. Never knew the Lord. Parents don't know the Lord. Um, and and then now we let's fast forward to a little bit like, like a year ago, right? Let's go 2020, 2022, okay? Year 2022. It's like November, December. Um, and I'm about to turn 18, right? And, uh, one day my mom's like, Hey, and I'm like, Hey mom. And keep in mind, me and my mom, we haven't the whole time growing up, um, before knowing the Lord, never really got along, um, some tension there. But she came up to me and was like, Hey, and I was like, what's up? And it got to the point where it was like, I had to make a decision between, um, staying at home with my mom and my, and my younger brother and, and if I did that, I couldn't eat any gluten or dairy um, because my mom's like anti-gluten and dairy. Uh, and, or it was like, I move out, I leave, and, um, well, I'm pretty well at that point, right? I, I live wherever, doing whatever, right? So I can eat as much gluten and dairy as I want to be a rebellious kid, right? <laughs> um, but, um... I wanted to stay at home, right? Um, I really didn't want to leave, but of course it was like, hey, do this or sorry, nothing. So it was, um, I, I made the decision. I was like, okay, well, this is it. You're not giving me an option to stay and pay for my own food, you know, do whatever. Uh, you're not giving me a way out. So I was like, okay, I'm choosing to, to stick with the gluten and dairy. And there was a reason to that. It's because track and field has always been the love of my life. I fell in love with track and field back in seventh grade. Um, it's never broken my heart. And uh, it's been my world. I've been blessed with the abilities of being fast. And I was, I was really relying for college and scholarship with that. So I was like, well, if I want to be prime Aiden in athletic shape, I need to feed myself properly, right? So that means eating some good dairy, eating some glu good gluten and stuff like that. You know, you need, you need to have a well-balanced diet. But for me, especially, it was a lot of dairy. You know, I had to drink a lot of protein shakes, you know, nourish my body properly. So I was like, well, this is important to me. My long-term goal is to run collegially and to get a scholarship with this. So I made that sacrifice. And a little bit before I turned 18, I left my mom's house and moved out to some family friends. And, um, 
I, I never I never moved back. Um, which I was it was interesting, right? You know, it's like I didn't necessarily get kicked out, but you know, like I had a choice, but I didn't have a choice. That's the way I feel about it. Um, that was a very interesting. Cause I lived with, I lived with my mom my whole life, and my brother. Um, I'd see my dad on the weekends. In the holidays, I'd be with him. In the summer too, I'd be with him. But it was very interesting, you know, leaving and being. Even though me and my mom didn't have a good relationship, I still loved her. I loved my little brother too. But it was it was weird leaving my home. And yeah, I turned eighteen. I was living with the family, um, great family. I love the family who I lived with. Um, moved in with them. I've known them forever. They were good, good friends of my dad's. Um, I lived with them so that I could be close to we, to my to my uh, high school. So you still can, you know, just just I wouldn't have to be all the way like a half hour away from my out for the high school or whatever. Um, even more, it'd be like forty five minutes. I don't know. It'd be a lot of gas for me to go back and forth, and then be a lot of time. And as an athlete, you need sleep. So you know, um, they offered me a place uh, because they've known me forever. I grew up with their daughter, um, so I know them my very very well. My dad grew up with. The father in high school. They've known each other forever. They actually started the business together. Um, I moved in with them. It was great. I loved the family. But obviously, you know, it's a big difference um, between having, like, your family family and, like, a new family, I guess. Because they are family to me. I love those people. Um, so that happened. And then fast forward to... See, this is a time where I like to journal. I started journaling. Probably about like a year ago. And my journal helps me out a lot. Because I don't have the best memory. I'm not blessed with that. But um, if I use my journal, I can see when some of this stuff happened, right? So it was, <coughs> it was like January 22nd. 20, I would look up the picture, but I don't want to stop recording. So... Uh, I have an image that, or a date that I know the day that we broke up, we broke up as, and I was dating this girl for about two years, and I was all in love with this girl, my first girlfriend ever. Um, she was great, we were great, I thought, you know, everything was going good. So happy, um, I really relied on her a lot. Sorry, I had to stop my video, because I'm sure you guys maybe heard this in the background, um, my little brother's being loud, uh, so I had to politely ask him to be quiet. <laughs> Um, at least quiet her down, I don't know. But back to my story, I don't know where it was exactly, because I forgot. Um, but I was like, I was dating this girl, right? We dated for two years, in love with her, first girlfriend ever. Um, very, very codependent on each other. So we really couldn't live without each other. We were always together. Um, did everything together. Um, just a good, really intimate relationship. Very close, knew everything, relied, you know, you guys, you know, it, when, when you're dependent on someone, that means you can't live without them. So when it comes to a breakup, that's not the best. Uh, but um, it was, it was, uh, it was, I think it was a winter ball at my school. And it was that night, I was having shin splints. And shin splints are when you have tiny fractures all, in, all along your bone. And let me see if I can show you right here. Right there in your leg, in your, in your bone. You have tiny fractures. And that's something that's always crushed me when it comes to athletically. I've always been cursed with shin splints. And that night I was having shin splints. And it was, you know, it, it, was, it was like a typical high school party or, I don't know, dance or whatever. Um, just jumping up and down, you know. And that's not really me. I don't really enjoy that stuff all the time. I'll do it for like 20 minutes. I'm out. You know, I'm done. But especially that night, like, she wanted me to dance with her and I couldn't because of my shins. And we had a big fight, right? It was a big thing. Um, we had plans to go to an all-you-can-eat sushi place afterwards, and we started fighting, you know, S you know, typical couple stuff, you know, you fight, you know, fighting is never fun, right? Um, but, you know, just, it's just like a normal couple argument, you know, everyone has arguments in their relationships, nothing's perfect, right? We argued, and then, I forget what happened, um, we tried to talk it out in my car, didn't go well. And then I just drove her home, and then we never talked later that night. And then I go to school, um, she doesn't text me back. And then I go back home after track practice. I go home, 
And at this time, we were living like in the same block because it worked out perfectly because where I lived was literally a block away from where, where my ex lived. When I came home, I came home to a letter on my bed and it was a breakup letter and it broke my heart. Um, cause to, to, to my perspective, um, relationship was good. We never, like, yeah, we have fights. Everyone has fights, right? It's normal. Um, but that fight ended us. Uh, there was a lot of stuff building up to it too. You know, we weren't, like I said, no one's perfect. The relationship wasn't good. It was never God centered. I didn't know the Christ. I didn't know our Lord and Savior at that time. It wasn't God centered. Um, so yeah, I came home to a breakup letter. Wrote, read that. I cried a little bit. Uh, I cried a bunch. Um, uh, I, 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 cause so it's funny, it's a funny story, right? You, I can laugh at this now. Um, I had my, it was a Squishmallow. You know, you guys know, I don't, I don't know if you guys know what Squishmallows are. But they're like, massive teddy bear I, I had one of the big ones and um i was at home when i read it and there was everyone else was there there was the mom dad uh, there was the daughter and the two brothers and we're all around the same age and and like like i read the letter love my life just broke up with me um so i, I don't want to cry super loud so don't hear me right so i'm like burying my face you know I don't, I don't know like typical high school movies i don't know but i was crying in the pillow um Crying is normal, okay? Everyone cries. But yeah, I read that, and um, for like a month, about like a month, I I tried to get her back. Um, uh, I asked if she was coming back, and it was kind of like she was. We we tried to that week after we had some we had some plans to go out to the city, Chicago, and see. I think it was like a musical. It was Hansel and Gretel. I remember it because it sucked. <laughs> um, we were like, it was like, it was like one of those situationships, right? Where it's like, you guys are broken up, but you aren't trying to figure it out. It was, it was messy. Um, it was a Thursday or Friday night. It was me, her, her friend, uh, her mom, dad, her brother, sister, and I think her other brother. So that's seven, right? Um, we've been talking all, not really, not a bunch. There's there there's been some big distance. I've been talking all week, um, trying to work it out. We and then this is like I think this is our last time ever. One of the last times ever hanging out, I think. And it was a horrible night. We tried to we try to like try to act normal, but obviously when you're going through like oh this is kind of the end of it, it wasn't great. I don't know why I added that, guys. I'm so sorry. I wasted a, like a good minute of your life probably. <laughs> um, I had a point to make. I forgot it. So that's great. But, you know, it was, it was kind of like a theme of trying to, like, trying to make the relationship work, but it just wasn't working. And then we decided to take a break, she said. So I was like, okay, let's take a break. And then she never came back, long story short. Um, I tried to chase after her for a little bit. I wrote her home as a note. It's never worked. So that really destroyed me, um, killed me, because she was my everything, my best friend, you know, love of, love of my life. Uh, I came out of nowhere for me. It was shocking. You know, I was knocked off my feet. Um, and then with that, I was like, well, my last hurrah is track, yay. Um, and one of the days was indoor season and I don't like indoor season. I never liked indoor track because it's not the best on your body. If you have shin splints, it's going to screw you. If you're a sprinter, it's going to screw you. It's just such a hard track. It's just not optimal. And I remember one of the practices, I believe it was like one of the first practices, um, very, very early in the season. Um, if I dig into my journal at some point in time, I probably can find it, but, um, I were going and, cause I kept in mind like, Oh, I have, I've, I have had shin splints. Um, my shins are kind of bugging me a little bit. Um, so, okay, I'm gonna go like 70%. I'm not going to go full out, you know, I'm not going to injure myself. And then I remember I go out for like one of the sprints, one of the workouts that we're doing and boom, instantly like I just fall to the ground. My shins are gone. Uh, I don't know what happened. Um, and uh, my coach is like, are you okay? And I'm like, my shins hurt. And he's like, go to the trainers. I'm like, okay, I go to the trainers. And shins once, I knew it. Um, I can kind of tell that it was kind of the end of my season. And the athletic trainer is also like, kind of hinting at it. It's kind of like, you're not going to get back to your peak performance. Um, we tried to do whatever we could throughout the season. And it killed me because, like I said, track and field was my heart. It was my love. 
Um, and I really relied on track and field to, to help me express all of these emotions I had from leaving my mom's house and the emotions of breaking up out of the blue um, and then trying to chase her for a month that did not help. I'm going to tell you right now, guys, word of advice, um, maybe chase for a week or two. Don't chase for a month plus. It's not good for your mental health. <laughs> if it's not working at the beginning, it's probably not going to work at the end. And whatever the Lord wants will happen. So just relax, take a chill pill. Um, and some advice that I tell myself, don't chase. Um, but yeah, so I was like, well, track, it's my everything. I'm going to put everything into it. It's going to be my outlet. And then I lost that. Uh, I couldn't go to the gym. I'm like that. My body was shot. I destroyed my shins. I don't know what happened. Um, and in that, I was in like a whole month, give or take, of just like, you know, sad depression. Um, I've done drugs in the past. Uh, I've drank in the past, but I didn't really want to become like an addict. I want to, I didn't really, I just didn't want to touch that. Um, I was looking for outlets. I was journaling a bunch, didn't help. I was reading a bunch, didn't help. I was trying to stay somewhat physically active, didn't help. I was trying to stay part of the team, didn't help, you know. The point being, everything I tried didn't help, right? And previously with that, with that ex of mine, um, she started bringing me to church with her family every, every few weekends whenever I could. Um, and I go to church with her and I wouldn't go because like, oh yeah, I love God. Right. No, it was not because I was like, oh yeah, I love this chick. Right. She's so great. Let me, let me spend more time around her. Um, and there were some seeds planted in my time of, of being at church there with her family. We go out to brunch afterwards. It was lovely. I loved it. Um, and so at that point I was, I was like, I've, I've had a few, maybe like six months of going to church with her and her family, which is great, but I was never a believer. And after searching and searching and searching for an escape out of all the pain and misery and just, just, just the pain, you know, and all the sadness of, of the breakup and everything that was happening, um, I, I couldn't find anything. And at that point, I, th I started talking, I, yet again, I don't know YouTube's rules about about this stuff, so I'm going to try to keep it somewhat simple, I don't know, you guys hopefully get the point, um, but I was thinking about, like, you know, saying goodbye to the world and leaving, um, because to me that was the only, only thing left, you know, I tried everything, I tried new relationships with friends, I didn't want to date, because I was under the influence of us getting back together, so I was like, oh, I'm just going to wait, um, I tried friends. I tried everything. I like, you know, you know, everything underneath the sun. I tried, right? And I was, I was like, a few days before, I was thinking about, I was thinking about saying goodbye. And I was driving, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and He was like, you know, He told me to come back to church Sunday, and I know I have it in my journal somewhere in here. I know I have it because I wrote it down. So come back to church. Give me a shot. That's, that's and then I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna obey. I'm like, I don't know what, what, what. It obviously wasn't me, as we all know. Everything good's from God. It was the Lord working in my heart, um, and He pushed me to go to church. And I went to church. I sat up. I sat upstairs um, on the top, on the top level, because uh, the same church service I went to was the one that my ex was at. So I was, I was, I was like trying to see her, you know, like, Hey, look at me in the church. Right. Um, but I also was like trying to like keep my boundaries because I know if I saw her, I'd get distracted. But one of my buddies I went to high school with, uh, he saw me there. And then the next school week he was like, Hey, and okay. So let me, let me go on too fast here. I really enjoyed it. I loved church. It was great. Um, that was a day when, you know, the Lord saved me from my, from, you know, doing something bad that I eternally regret. Um, but that was the day when I was reborn. It was great. Uh, but my buddy, one of my buddies, he was like, hey, we weren't, we weren't ever really friends. We were on the track and field team. We knew each other, but we were never like friends, right? We talked before, but we were never like friends. And he was like, hey, I saw you at church, man. I was, I was like, yeah, man, I loved it. It was great. And this whole time I was thinking about, oh, I love church. Let me get into a youth group, right? And he was like, hey, you want to come to Hayax? And Hayax was the name of our youth group. I was like, oh, dude, that's crazy, bro. I'm looking for a youth group. Uh, it's obviously the Lord there. We all 
I think that's clear as day. Um, and then, yeah, I went to a youth group with him. Loved it. I met some amazing people there. I met some amazing leaders there who nurtured my faith. Um, that buddy, it was his name's JD, uh, great friend of mine. I love him. Uh, his mom also nurtured my um, love for the Lord. She was a very, very godly woman, um, uh, godly, godly mother. She, she was like a mother to me to an extent. And, you know, just having all those people pour into me, um, having the, having like a desire to grow and know the Lord. Ow. Sorry, my mom almost calling me. <laughs> um, hanging up because I'm recording. I love my mom, okay? <laughs> I'll call right after this. Um, but, yeah, you know, from there, I, I got really pushed to share my story. Um, I had so many people pouring into me. I loved church. It was such an outlet for me. Um, it was the only escape I read all that pain I had. Uh, the Lord saved me. I grew in my faith. Um, and, I mean, there's so much, so much that's happened in my life. Uh, one of the highlights I remember of, of being uh, so new in my Christian life. Funny story, you know, I have stories to tell, so I must tell it. Um, me and JD... We were, we had the opportunity to share our testimony together, right? Because we had like a shared testimony about like, there's my testimony, and there's like, hey, JD's testimony. Like, oh, let me, let me, let me, let me go up and ask Aiden to come to high with me. And yeah, we, we got to go share to the women's group um, together. That was so cool. Uh, I, we we left school early. It was so cool sharing like my story with a brother. You know, that was a highlight and. After the women's group, they prayed for us. Um, they gave us gifts, and they gave me a card. And I was opening up the card, and it was like, "Happy birthday! We're so proud of you, Aiden, or something like that." We love you. I don't know. Some just, 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 just some like really, you know, just godly, motherly people. You know, something, some like godly, motherly person would say. Um, but it's a happy birthday, right? And I was like, "Oh, ha ha ha! This is so funny." <laughs> like, they, they don't have. Like, 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 they choose, like, a spare, a spare card, right? Uh, I was like, I, I didn't care. I was like, that's just funny. It was, like, funny to me. But, like, I think, like, a week went by, and I was like, oh, because I was so new to my faith, right? I didn't know anything. I was like, oh, dude, I wrote that because I was reborn, you know? You know once, you, once, you, once you believe, once you repent and believe, you were born in Christ, right? I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so, it's so funny. Um, hopefully, you guys also find that funny. I don't know. I didn't get a, I didn't do an amazing job painting that picture. I know, um, but yeah, I just had so many great people pouring into me. Um, the Lord really worked in my heart, um, and that's my story to glorify Him. Uh, maybe I left things out. I don't know. Um, but since then, I really got connected to the high to the uh, youth group there. Um, I learned a lot. I met a lot of great people. I. I just, I just fell in love with the Lord, you know? Like, like I don't know if anyone can relate to me, but once you fall in love with the Lord, you want to tell everyone about Him. So I had the great opportunity to bring others with. Uh, so I brought tons of friends with, and I just really grew in my faith. And praise the Lord, because He really worked in my heart and worked in my life. And to this day, um, as you guys know, I'm, I'm really into a whole bunch of these ministries. Um, I, I'm in the off season of my concrete season. I get to, I get to spend time reading God's Word praying um and it's just it's just so great the lord's changed my life and uh hopefully if you guys don't know jesus hopefully my story helped you get a little curious right about him and i'm gonna tell you the best thing i ever did for my life was repent and believe and fall in love with jesus and if you guys are on on edge or curious um telling it's the best thing you're ever going to do for yourself no matter what position you're in um i don't know some of you guys might be like oh i don't have i wasn't kicked out of my house i wasn't i didn't lose my girlfriend uh, um it's like oh i'm just this is my life's going okay but this is interesting to me if, if god's calling your heart towards that look into it pray about it leave a comment i don't know um leave a comment i don't know pray about it uh, repent and believe that's what I'm gonna tell you because find find a local church a biblical teaching church and 
just fall in love with the Lord. Okay, it's the best decision you'll ever make. And if if you're on edge, try it out. Right? I have some buddies who who their stories are somewhat similar to mine, and they were like, well, I figured why not try being a Christian. So they tried it out, and also they became Christians. Some of the best decisions the best decisions they'll ever make. And I have not once regretted um, turning away from the world and turning to Christ, my loving Father. So um, hopefully God uses this. My prayer is that God uses this to glorify Him and to hopefully one of you guys become a believer. You know, well, everyone in the perfect world, right? But the world's not perfect, so we'll see what happens. But that's my story. Um, that's my coming to Christ. Um, love the Lord. Everyone should love the Lord. He's your creator, your father. Um, he truly cares about everything about you. But that's my prayer for you guys. Uh, I mean, it's not my prayer, but I'm praying for you guys. Um, but yeah, that's that's my story. That's all I got. Um, I, I don't think I left anything out. I don't. I hope not. Uh, funny story. Uh, my JD's mom, JD's mom and JD, they reached like yo, because I started writing poetry. Um, as I became a Christian, I started writing my poetry, and I put some of my poetry into an art fest at my church. Um, uh, and they're like, oh, that's cool, bro. And then I shared my testimony, and so my poetry with JD, and he was like, bro, you gotta share your story. You gotta share your testimony at church in the high X group because we were going through this time of like it was like eyes open or something like that and we were like sharing our stories um and obviously I shared my story and JD's mom was also like you gotta share it right and I have I think I have it somewhere on paper still but I was so nervous I was just I was just so scared to share my story uh, in front of a whole bunch of people and I invited like everybody from my school <laughs> so like there was tons of people there people I didn't know um I've never been a Christian. Um, my past life was, I knew people, I was nice, I was good, but I wasn't a Christian. Um, uh, I'd make tons of gay jokes and stuff like that. I was just always just a jokester. Uh, I cussed a bunch. But um, tons of people came to the, you know, power through the power of God. And I was so scared to share my story. But I remember in preparation, I would, on the way there and for the week coming, I would practice, I'd record myself, and I'd practice me reading my testimony. It was the funniest thing ever. Um, I saw the videos. I look back on it now. Uh, um, if you guys want to see it, if you guys want to see my my like testimony, like re- recording it, like trying to see how I sound, it's probably stupid as heck, but it's probably funny. I probably won't watch it after this, but yeah, I, I just record myself. I'd read my testimony. So scared, and then I also wrote a poem at the end of it. Um, I don't know what the poem was. I forgot. I have it somewhere. But yeah, honestly, I think I'm rambling at this point. I have to use the bathroom, so I love y'all. God loves you even more. Repent and believe. And that is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed my story. And until hopefully tomorrow, all right?